How many of you watching this video really dislike speaking in front of people? You know, it just makes you nervous, it feels uncomfortable, it's just not a pleasant experience. Oh, I see a couple hands. Okay. Well, how many of you watching this video really get into speaking in front of other people? It's like a rush, a, a chance for you to be in the spotlight. Okay, I see some more hands over there. All right, well, if you're an interior design student, speaking in front of a group of people is inevitable, you know, because we have casual conversations with clients, formal presentations at conferences. We could even have a meeting with a group of board members for a project. Well, I'm making this video to help interior design students, or any students for that matter, learn some tips and tricks on how to gain confidence when it comes time to presenting in front of a group. So there's three areas that I'm going to touch on. The speech itself, how you look, and how you speak. Let's start with the speech itself as that is the one area that can have the most impact on your speaking success. And one of the first things I tell my students is simply to know your topic. Since you're the one who designed your project, or you're the one who researched the topic, nobody knows the subject like you do. So switch how you approach the presentation. In your mind, become less of a presenter and become more of a teacher who is focused on simply just getting information out. In other words, you're kind of like educating people about the topic. All you have to do is explain what it is and why it's meaningful. You will quickly find that it's easier to approach presentations with a teacher hat on instead of a presenter hat. Focus on the topic and not on the audience. Now the speech itself should be organized in a way that makes sense to the audience and be designed to educate others. So like all great stories, a speech should have a good beginning, a detailed middle, and a memorable end. The beginning of a presentation is oftentimes called the introduction and it should only last about one to two minutes. If you're feeling a little jittery, a great way to get over those jitters is to engage the audience in a really fun way. Not only will that ease your tension, but it will put your audience at ease as well. And suddenly everyone in the room is kind of like at the same level. You're speaking with them instead of at them. That makes everybody feel good. Now a couple of ways to engage the audience could be to ask them a question and have them raise their hands, or you could actually get their answers. You could have them close their eyes and imagine a scenario. You could even tell them a funny story about yourself. There's lots of ways to engage an audience in the first couple sentences of your presentation. The more engaged you get them, the more at ease you will be. The ultimate goal of the introduction is to explain what the topic or the design problem is that you are speaking to. Are you speaking about a project that you completed? Well, if so, in the first few minutes, it's a great time to explain what the parameters the project had before you actually got started working on it. So like, what were the design problems that you needed to solve? So for instance, I could say something like, this project asked me to reimagine a movie theater from a Comic-Con perspective. So you don't go into details yet, but you have to define what the project and the problem is all about. Are you speaking about what makes you passionate about design to a group of people? That's a little bit different. That's more of a topic as opposed to a project type of speech. Just give the audience a little background about who you are and include those topics that excite you while you're doing it. So for instance, I could say when I was little, I used to draw on the walls in our house with all kinds of color. Now I'm really interested in understanding how the psychology of color affects the ways humans behave in a space. Don't give too many details in the introduction. That's what the middle is for. Just get the audience set up for what's to come. Now the middle of the speech is where you start to detail out how your problem got solved or what your topic is actually all about. A really great strategy is to first quote or define what research says about the topic and then explain how you use that research to create your project. So for instance, research shows that people want to engage in conversation with each other after seeing a movie. So I created an area just outside of the theater exit where you could sit with your family and friends and have a chance to decompress from the movie. 
Now for topic-based presentations, you can approach the middle part of your presentation much the same way. Color theory can be broken into three themes. And then what you do is you explain each of those three themes and how each of those themes ties into your passions about color. So remember, the middle is all about explaining the who, what, when, where, why, and how of your project or your topic in more detail. The ending of your speech should only last for a couple of minutes. A good way to really get it started is to take the audience back to what the initial problem was all about. So movie theaters have great potential for bringing movie fans together in a more interactive way than they have been traditionally designed in the past. And then next you would explain how your design did indeed solve the problem by summarizing the key takeaways from your middle section. The Polaris Royale Movie Center is designed to bring people together before, during, and after the movie with conversational charging centers, post-movie interaction rooms, group theater seating, as well as shopping opportunities. Now for topic-based speeches, find a way to tie what you said in the beginning of your speech to help you summarize the main takeaways you want the audience to have. The final sentence of your speech, regardless of what kind of presentation you're doing, should leave a lasting impression. Don't fall flat and just say, the end, or that's all I got. Weak, 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 weak. Ask yourself, what is the purpose of this talk? What takeaway do you want the audience to have from your speech? How do you want the audience to feel about you and your topic at the end? Now you can end a speech by giving the audience a call to action or something with a famous quote. You can also simply say that your solution is a great fit and that the client will enjoy the design long after the project has ended. Find what works for your speech, but don't let it end weekly. Weak endings, they tend to detract from your credibility as a speaker. You're in charge. End your presentation showing you are in charge. Now, once you know how to organize your speech, be sure to match the organization with your PowerPoint presentation layout. So here's some really quick tips to help you get your PowerPoint strong. First, reading a PowerPoint word for word is very boring for your audience. So be sure to use bulleted points of about two to three words per bullet. It's enough to prompt you on what your point is that you're trying to make so that it allows you to speak more naturally to your audience about the prompt, but not enough that you're gonna sit there and read it. Don't let all the information on the screen show at once. Use animations to show each bullet one at a time as you speak. It keeps your audience engaged and it keeps you on track with what you're talking about. Just be careful, don't use any zany animations, okay? Don't make like things fly around the screen and everything. Keep it simple. Personally, I like to use the fade transition. It's very professional, very simple, yet very effective. Keep titles at the top of each slide so that the audience knows what the general topic is that you're talking about on that slide. Then you just add the details and bulleted points below the title. It's really good to have a picture of some kind on each slide. So PowerPoints that are all words, they're very boring to look at. So be sure to add a picture. Keep a good contrast between the background and your font. It's less stressful for your audience to see light backgrounds with dark words. It's more stressful on your audience to see a dark background with light words. Moving on from the speech itself, let's focus on how you look during the presentation. Now, whether you're in my class or if you're just watching this video on your own, always go into any presentation looking and feeling your best. That means you're well-groomed, well-dressed, you've had enough sleep the night before, and you've had a good meal beforehand, you're well-hydrated, and you're happy to be there. Not only are you gonna feel good when you look good, but the audience, they're gonna have an instant positive psychological connection to you before you even speak. Because I'm here to tell you, an audience is always rooting for the presenter and they want to trust the presenter. By simply looking the part, you've already got them eating out of your hands. And if you don't look the part, then you've already lost your audience without saying a word.
So yes, my interior design students, from now on, if you have a presentation in this class, in another class, in an internship, in a job, at a conference, anywhere, the expectation is that you are looking the part. Now, does that mean you got to go rent a tux or a formal ball gown? No, but you should look business savvy. What would you wear to an interview? What would you wear to the first day at an interior design job? Look snazzy. Not only are you going to have a positive impact on your audience, but your professors are going to be affected positively as well, especially on your grades. So dress to impress. A couple of other tips uh, include facing your audience while you're speaking, not your PowerPoint presentation. Uh, come away from the podium and be out for your audience to actually see you. And this is where using a clicker is kind of helpful. So instead of having to be at the keyboard, you have a little handheld device that helps you move through the slides and all your points. Watch what your feet and your hands are doing. Are you swaying around? Are you making too many gestures? That does make a difference. Now, last but not least that I want to talk about is watching how you speak. Make sure that you're speaking clearly and you're enunciating your words well. Making sure that you're not speaking too quickly or too softly. So, uh, you know, if you speak too slowly, that's a bad thing. If you speak too quickly, that's a bad thing. And also, if you need to work on getting your voice heard at the back of the room, then practice that. A weaker voice oftentimes comes across that you're not confident and that you don't believe in your presentation. So make sure that you find your voice when you're speaking. Watch your vocal mannerisms. Things like, uh, ums, like, you know, like, you know, those kind of things, uh, they get a little annoying. So just watch what you're saying. Do your best. Silence is okay. I'd rather you say nothing than to say um. Now in conclusion, I've talked about how to develop the speech itself, how to look the part, how to speak the part. Be sure to also practice your speech. Practice makes perfect, but it also gives you more confidence. And the more confident you feel, the less jitters you're going to have before your, and during your speech. Remember that you are the expert on your projects and your topics. And a presentation is only an opportunity to educate others about what they are and why they are meaningful. In turn, you will give the audience something to remember. As John F. Kennedy once said, the only reason to give a speech is to change the world. So go forth, young Padawans, and change the world!